Number 41. One easy way to reduce heating and cooling costs is to add extra insulation in the attic of a house. Suppose the house already has 15 centimeters of fiberglass insulation in the attic and in all exterior surfaces. If you added an extra 8 centimeters of fiberglass to just the attic, then by what percentage would the heating cost of the house drop? Take the single story house to be such dimensions and okay. All right, so um, inherently in a question like this, there are a lot of assumptions. So I'm going to make some assumptions. Your assumptions might be different than mine. I might not, uh, you know, you might not totally agree with mine. I might not totally agree with yours. However, though, we can come up with an answer depending upon the assumptions we make. All right, so my assumption uh, will be this. They're basically saying that uh, here is a, you know, one story house and there is an attic. There's an attic above. Okay, and I believe what they're trying to say is that the this this ceiling of the first floor, and this would then be the floor of the attic, right? The ceiling of the first floor is the floor of the attic. Um, this is the ex This is where they're going to add that extra insulation. Okay, so now that being the case, I realize really the key insight here is to is to note that the um, that the amount of difference or that the difference in terms of heating costs and the amount of insulation is based, is based on volume, okay? So if I can figure out the percent volume change, then I can figure out the change in heating costs, okay? They're basically directly related. I mean, if you look, or inversely related, I should say, even if you look at this conduction formula, right? If you double the thickness, what happens then to the rate of heat transfer, it goes down by half, right? So it's inversely proportional to one another, right? And the area is not changing because the whole house is insulated. So really, the only thing is that the thickness is changing. Now, I can I, I can do a weighted average based on thickness. I could talk about volume. It doesn't really, you know, there's several ways to approach this. But I think the easiest way is just think from a volume perspective. So if I had to ask you, if I had to ask you, you know, what's the total volume of insulation uh, before we add any? Well, we can figure that out, right? You know this insulation is 15 centimeters thick, a.k.a. the thickness is going to be 0.15 meters. And that insulation is going to be on these four walls, one, two, and then the back wall, three, right? That would have been created roughly around here. And then the side wall over here would have been four, okay? So we know that there is insulation in those four walls. We, know, we can calculate the total area of those four walls. Right, what would be the area of just this wall right here? Well, it would be 10 by 3, okay? So that would be, so let me calculate that. So that's 10 by 3. And then there's two of them, right? There's a wall over here like that, and then there's a wall in the back like that. So I can just multiply that by 2, and this becomes 60, right? So this is 60 uh, meters cube, uh, squared, right? 60 square meters, okay? I'm not talking about the units, but that should hopefully make sense. Then... I mean, in my calculation, I'm just adding them at the end. Then we have this wall. Okay, that's one. And what are the dimensions of that square area? Well, 15 by 3. And we have two of them, right? One wall here and then another wall here. Okay, so that's going to be 15 times 3. So let me just move this up slightly. So that's going to be 15 times 3 and then times 2, right? So 15 times 3 is 45 times 2 is 90. So that's 90 square meters. And then, let me just leave that up there. And then we have a ceiling, okay, of the first floor right here. Now, you might say, well, what's below it? Is there a basement below it? Do we have insulation down here? I don't know. They didn't tell us, right? I don't know if there's a basement or not. Some homes have it. Some homes don't. So depending upon what your assumption is, it might be different than mine. I'm just going to keep it simple. So I'm going to say that there's only insulation uh, above it, all right? And that the floor is perfectly insulated. It doesn't really matter. Actually, yeah, why don't we do both? Why don't we... It doesn't really make a difference. Let's just say that there is insulation here. At, honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to say, what's simple? This. We're just going to assume that there's insulation in the ceiling and none in the floor. Okay? So that being the case, that's the, since there's only insulation in the ceiling, which is that attic insulation, because remember, the ceiling of the first floor is the same thing as the floor of the attic. So I think that's what they're getting at. So what's the square area there? Well, the square area will be 10 by 15. So just 10 by 15 now, and there's only one of them, because I'm not including the bottom, uh, 10 by 15, so that's going to be 150 meters square. So when I add up this whole square area, we realize that we have a total square footage of how much? 
sounds like 300, right? 300 meters squared. And now, if this is the total square area, and I know the thickness of the insulation is 0.15 meters, then I can find the volume of insulation, right? Because all the insulation is all along the walls. Right? I'm sure if you guys watch those home shows, you, you should be familiar with this. So this is 0.15 meters, and then just multiply it on out. So we get 300, 300 times 0.15, and we get about 45, all right? So here it's 45 cubic meters. That's how much, that's the volume of insulation at the start. So this is 45 cubic meters initially. Now they're going to add 8 centimeters to just the attic and not the exterior walls. So what that means is this ceiling here, right, the ceiling here, let me get rid of some of these stars now. Let me just, let me just clean this up slightly, okay? So now what they're basically saying is that just the attic here, just the floor of the attic or the ceiling of the first floor is going to get an extra eight centimeters of insulation. So then how does the volume, the total volume of the insulation change? Well, this will remain unaffected. This will remain unaffected. The only way it's going to change is basically this, uh, this the ceiling, AKA the floor of the attic will change, right? So I know at a minimum, I'm gonna have 300 square meters, okay, of total square footage. So here, so let's do, so the volume of insulation, okay, uh, with the, I'll say upgrade, will be the square area is going to be 300 square meters, right, times the 0.15 meters, I still have at least 45 cubic meters, right, I still have the original amount, plus now, to just this area at the top, I'm going to add 8 centimeters, so basically now I got to take that square area of the ceiling, which is the floor of the attic, 150, and then multiply that now by the uh, additional depth of insulation. So that's going to be 0 0.08. So let's do that. In the This is the volume of insulation in the upgrade. And now we have 45 plus then 150 times 0 0.08. So this becomes 57. 57 cubic meters. And now, my friends, all we have to realize is that, again, the the energy savings is proportional then to the, uh, uh, to the volume of insulation. So now we can find the, the amount of, uh, of savings, basically, right, by just comparing these two volumes. Depends on how you want to do it. You know, we could do it as just a fraction, or we could do it as a percentage, we could do it as, as a percent change of the initial. All right, let's see one. Let me just see exactly what they say, you suppose. Uh, well, well uh, by sorry, by what percentage, right? Would the heating costs of the house drop? Okay, so basically, however much more it, it increased, we can then figure out the percent drop of it. So how much did it increase? Well, we can simply do 57 over the 45, and we can figure out how many times more there is, so 57 over 45. So there's about 1.26 or 1.267 or so times more. Times more insulation, right? AKA there is 26.7%, 26.7% more insulation when they upgrade. So here, this tells us how much more insulation there is, right, percentage-wise. So pretend I give you a ratio of 1 over 1. Obviously, that's equal to 1. Now let's pretend, and I'm basically using this formula. Now remember, the numerator stays constant. So the denominator is what's changing, and, and essentially the volume changed by 26.7%, right? Why? Well, because the average thickness of the overall insulation changed by that same percentage, Okay, so then if I were to take this denominator value and increase it by 26.7%, then that value would be 1.267. If you do the division now between that, 1 divided by uh, point, uh, 1.267, we find that the fraction now is, or the, uh, the um, decimal value here is 0.789 or so, 789. Okay, so now the question is, well, how much was originally, let's just pretend your cost was $1, and now it's 78.9 cents, essentially, all right? How much was your energy bill reduced in, in cents-wise? So just be one minus that answer, 
right? It'd be one minus 0.789. So essentially you reduced your cost by 21 cents, okay? So now you reduce the cost by 21 cents. How much, what percent drop is that then if this is the amount of cents, right? Fractions of a dollar that the cost was reduced by. You started at one, you ended at 21 cents cheaper. So what's the percent change? Well, you would take the change and divide it by the original value, right? So it's just simply 0.21 over 1, which is basically 0.21, okay? And that works out to be 21%. So that's the actual percentage change. That's what you should experience. So a 26.7% increase in insulation correlates then with a 21% reduction in the heating costs, all right? So hopefully this video helps, guys. Uh, please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.